So today I'm gonna to walk you through my editing process in Lightroom, breaking it down step by step, focusing on a moody street photography. And I need to adjust the mic like this. I think it's good. <laughs> I don't know if it made any difference. All right, so welcome to Lightroom. This is the photo that we are gonna work with today. And in the end, it might look something like this. Now I'm gonna try to keep this video somewhat short, but still, I don't want to edit too much. I myself, I love to see other photographers' work process. So just sit back, enjoy, and we're gonna have a fun time. All right, so the first thing I usually do when I get a photo like this, I start by finding the crop. But first, I go down here and in transform, you can see level, I click that, and it's just straight and sits out. Make sure the lines are straight. And you can even, while you're here, go to lens corrections and enable uh, co profile corrections and then remove chromatic operation, operation, <laughs> hard word. Now, I don't always do enable profile corrections. I think sometimes the uh, imperfectness of the lenses are nice, but for this one, I'm gonna do it. So I often just toggle it on and off and see, you know, does it look nice? I think this looks cool here. All right, now we can forget about this. Now it's time to find the crop and up here you can click crop and this is going to be on Instagram. So we go four by five and just find a nice crop. Now, when I'm thinking about the crop, I'm thinking like, what is the focus of the uh, this picture? And I think definitely that this person here in the orange coat is 100% the focus of this picture. She's a star, you know, sometimes the crop is very obvious. Uh, so it's maybe in the middle and I try to make like making distance equally from every side. But here I think like this here should be pretty cool. I mean, I try a few things, maybe too low, somewhere around here. But then I start with the basic corrections and I would like to get this a little bit more cooler. Mm, I usually take down the highlights a bit. All right. And we can raise the shadows to whites. We can go up. Now, usually I, if I raise the shadows this much, I might compensate by going down with the blacks. But lately I've been liking like pushing the blacks up, but now let's let's make this minus 10 like this. And like everything I do, I usually come back and you know, tweak it even more. But in the beginning, this is like what I start with. And I'll leave the clarity and texture as it is and vibrant saturations, we will come back to that. Tone curve, we will come back to. And here we start with the HSL. Now, if you don't really know the HSL sliders, I'll leave a video there where I cover them like in details. But for moody street photos, usually what I do, and I see a lot of others do, that you desaturate a lot of colors. Uh, in my case, I desaturate blues, uh, greens, and yellows. And then you focus on other colors like orange and red, okay? And this is very popular to desaturate the blues and the greens and yellows. That really creates that moody effect. So you might not think that there's a lot of blue here, but there is actually a lot of in the reflection and that stuff. So we just start by going minus 75. And already we start to get it like this. Aqua, go minus 50. We also take this one to 75. There isn't a lot of green here. Uh, there is some in the building there. Maybe we can, let me see, take this down to 50. And yeah, this is a f nice starting point. Here you can see if you toggle this, it's before and after. Now, before I go any further here with the HSL slider, I like to go down to the calibration here. And <laughs> here I always have a different things that I like. At the moment, I really like to go minus 30 and plus 20 here. And we can add here around seven. I think this brings out great tones. So if you see it before and after, you can see that the reds really start to pop and we get a little, uh, if there was more blue here, we can, I'll show you. You can see that this starts to turn a nice teal. All right. Now, once I've done that, I start to shift the colors the way I like. Now, what I really like is to bring the aquas up to more here. Then it becomes more blue. I think it's, it, it's teal enough. This is a little bit ridiculous. So let's just leave that at zero. Now, for the yellow, I just check and basically I'm just checking, you know, it's all about like what looks nice. I think this is mainly affecting the sign here. So you can see if we have it down here, it's going to blend too much. So I think that right now we can do this up here and taking up the lumen loom on this one. Would be, oh, I like that. It really makes that those that pop. Even we can desaturate this more. So it's like this. Okay. The orange, I would like to bring down a bit to have it like this. We can even bring it up since I've desaturated all this. Now I would like the breads and the orange to pop. So let's just put, take that up like this. And even the, let's just bring this up at 10. We can bring the Luma here. How much can we go? I 
think we can go pretty high here. 50, is that too much? Nah, I think that looks good. Could maybe bring this up to 10. Okay, and if you hit Y on your keyboard, you get before and after. And already I think the image is starting to look nice. Like this is just the colors, but a little bit further down, you'll see like where we really, really start to get that contrast and that nice thing, that, that epicness into the photo um, that makes it more three-dimensional. But now I start with the tones. I think this is like, for now, this is starting to look pretty good. Let me see here one more thing. As I said, I this is like just a starting point. And throughout everything else that I'm changing, I'm really going to come back to this all the time. So before we go any further, I would like to split toning we're going to do, but I'll do that a little bit later. I go to detail and I really like to add like around 75. And then in the masking, I like to mask it out. Now what's happening now is that everything that is white at zero, it's affecting the entire image, okay? Now, if you move the masking while holding in Alt, you can see what it's gonna affect. It's only affecting the white. So the more to the right you move it, the less of the image is gonna affect. So not only the outlines are gonna be sharp, sharpened. So I think like somewhere around here would be cool. Now, this image was shot at ISO 1600. So it's a little bit grainy. So I think you can easily add a little bit of noise reduction to it. All right, so now this is starting to look good. Next up is the tone curve. Now here, a lot of magic happens. Now, if you don't know what the tone curve is, here's a quick crash course. Basically, here you have the lightest and here you have the darkest and everything in between. So highlights here, mid-tones here and shadows here. If you move it above, you see there's a line here. If you move it above, it's gonna make it brighter at the specific point. And if you move it below, it's gonna make it darker. Double tap and you reset. Now the cool thing is that you can add nodes wherever you like. So you can move it, you know, isolate different parts of the image and move it like that, okay? Now, here's what I usually do. Reset everything here. I create a basic S curve but I might add a few extra nodes. So let's see. And here, just massaging the curve. If you hold in Alt, it's gonna make it so you move it slower. Because if you don't hold in, it can be very hard to get like the exact po point, you know? But if you have hold in Alt, you can easily, you know, get the right po place, touch, right thing. <laughs> well, well, what were we doing? We were creating a banger. So here we're gonna go. I move this a little bit down and I'm going to crush the black. So if you raise here, you're going to get that fade. Now, I think everybody's a little bit tired of too much fade. So take it easy here, but I just add a little, little fade. And then I raise this down a little bit here. If I feel that the picture is becoming too muddy, I might add another one here and raise the shadows a little bit again. So it's like this. Now the mid-tones. I think here the mid-tones would be cool to have them like this. Let's see the highlights. I'm just checking, no no two photos are really the same. So you have to like, you're going through the process again. I think this looks pretty damn sick in the beginning. Let me see. Maybe we can take this down a little bit here. mid -tones slightly up. All right, this looks epic. Now I'll add a little bit of contrast too. So we can add like 20, I think will be cool. Let's just contrast the whole photo. Now the, the difference is pretty nice, I like that. Now I really like to add vibrance. So let's add like 45 of vibrance. Now it becomes very, very poppy. And then I like to desaturate. So let's just start with 10 or even like 12. I think this is cool. All right. Now the clarity slider here is something that used to be very, very popular. People are like really just going bananas on the clarity, but I think it looks pretty little bit weird to be honest. I, Cause if you add clarity here, you're adding it to the entire picture. I'd rather, take this down a little bit to get a little softer feel and then paint on clarity to places I like. I would like to paint this with clarity, let this, this pop a little bit, her, maybe the street a little bit. And there, but like in different photos, there are a bunch of things I like to pop, make pop, you know. But for now, this is going to be cool like it is. And we go down here to the effects. Now I'm going to add vignette. Now I'd like to add my own vignette and we're going to do that with the gradient filter, but I think it's cool to add a little bit of this. So what I do, if you go minus 12, you can see that it becomes a little bit dark around the edges. Now I'm just going to show you here that I like to take the highlights all the way up. And what it does, if you have it like this, if you remove the highlights, it's going to let the highlights come in. Because what I do now is I establish, okay, where is the light source coming in from? So the light source of 
this photo is coming here. So I want this to exaggerate the light source so we have like a natural light source coming in. And here we can add a bunch of shadows to focusing more onto the tar uh, target, <laughs> onto the subject, okay? So I do it like this. I start by doing like 12 here. I think that looks cool. We can feather it up a little bit and then highlights all the way. Now is the fun stuff. We go to gradient, gra gradient filter and we are gonna add a few. Now here, we can start with the dark ones. I can add one that goes like this, and this is really where the contrast starts to pop in. So we can make it like dark, probably more like so, looks good to me. We can add another one. It would be like this. I'm gonna drag it so it comes from here. And really narrowing down on that subject. You see, oh, this looks so good. And we can add another one a little bit here. I mean, I'm constantly checking. Where can we add, where would be a natural place for shadows to be? That, that's how I want it to be. I want it to seem a little bit natural where the shadows could be. And here, definitely it could be shadows. And here is the light source. And we're going to enhance the light in a second. So I go from here. I make them go like this one can go like this, but it's really... So if you have no idea what this is, basically here is everything is going to be affected. And from this line above, it's going to be like a gradient. So if we take it all the way to here, you can see that this gradually becomes less and less, okay? like so. All right, now I think we have the shadows pretty much locked down. And then we can create a little moodiness here. So I'm going to enhance again with the gradient filter. I usually use a gradient filter and then the radial filter as well. So with the gradient filter, we can do like this. Now you could go and just blow it out like this. Looks a little bit weird. But we're going to add a little bit like this. I like to drag down the clarity here because I think it like creates like a misty vibe. So glad drag down the clarity and the dehaze, here's where magic happens, baby. So with the dehaze, if you drag, drag it down, it's like you're creating a lot of haze. Now bear with me, this looks strange now because you're just adding it on top here. But look, we are gonna blend it in. So here we can add the haze like this. Now already this looks cool, but a little bit strange. But if you go to mask off luminance here, Again, if you hold an Alt and drag, now you can see that the white is everywhere where the gradient filter is, is affecting, but it, as soon as you move it here, it's gonna affect less and less. So it's blending it in. Now all the outlines there, it's not affecting it there. So we can drag it up to here, and now it has blended in. So you can see now, if you toggle on and off, the difference is pretty huge. This is like really where I think a lot of the magic in my editing comes in is using this gradial filter to turn like close in on a subject okay now, i even think that maybe we've gone too far with this so we can take it down just a notch and then we can add another one that is going to be super subtle and just add a haze that we come down to them like this and just tiny little haze just like bam 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 just tiny haze like so and we are going to take the luma and drag it up a little bit so it blends a little bit in there all right now once i'm happy with this I go to here, the brush brush tool, and we start to brush in things that I want to highlight. Things that I want to like show, we brush it with that. So in this photo, we're definitely going to make her pop. So we can we can uh, punch in, <laughs> not there, we can punch in on her, and then we can just paint. If you happen to go like uh, too much, you go like maybe out of line like this, it's no problem. Then you just have to press Alt, and you find, get the minus, so you just take it away like this. All right, so now we press uh, O again. If you if this is in the way, the little dot here, you can press H and it hides it, okay? So we're hiding it here. Now I'm just basically gonna pump up the shadows, you pump them up, make it pump them up more. It's just all about testing. You're testing how far can you go with this. And now when you zoom out, you can see how what it looks like. Here is with it and here is without it. It really makes that jacket pop we like that now once i've painted the subject i go through the picture and i'm like is there anything else i can paint that i want to pop out i think this here looks cool and if you press enter you can make a new one and we can paint this little, little box here i'm gonna add in a bunch of clarity we really make it pop and then some contrast. Okay, so already I think the image is starting to look pretty, pretty, like it's <laughs> pretty good. I even might add, because I like this to be a little bit contrasty, I might add, take this down like this. Now I would like personally to go to split toning. So I'll go to split toning. So split toning, basically you're pushing colors to either highlights and shadows or both. Now 
I would like for this one to have a little bit of orange in the highlights and just a tiny touch, like six. You see, it's like it's not much, but you can see that there's a, it, it's a little, little bit. So it becomes a little bit orange. And to the shadows, I would like to get a little bit of blue to get a little bit of teal and orange. So now it's the shadows are a little bit blue, and I think this looks insane. What you can do with the balance, now you, if you go to the left, the shadows are going to be more dominant. And if you go to the right, highlights is going to be more dominant. And I think it, for this one, it would be cool to have highlights like this, like so. Now, once this is all finished, I do the final adjustments. I see that I forgot to put the grain. I like having a little bit of grain, so we can have the grain like this. And I do the final adjustments. What do I need to do here? We could maybe make this a little bit more orange, add a five to this one too. And even, you know, make this pop a little bit more. And maybe I don't have to take this much down of the blue. Maybe we can add a little bit of the blue back. Just like so. I think this is it. And, and as I said, I just go through it a few more times, see if there is anything nice. Might add a little bit of texture to this one because we took down the, the clarity. You can have it like this. All right, so this is my editing process for Moody Street Photos. Now you've seen it, you've asked for it, and I've given you it. If you sum it up, I basically desaturate a few colors, blues, greens, and, and, and yellows, and then I emphasize on red and orange. And then I use the tone curves and the combination with gradient filters to create a very cool looking contrast that I really much like. And I always think, you know, where is natural light coming from? And I try to replicate that in a way and then put shadows in other ways. Anyways, let's not have it any longer. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me comments down below. I promise I'll try my very best to answer. And I'll catch you guys in the next video mode. Peace.